I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So, I don't know if you've seen this. Probably not. Probably not. I'm excited, I though. I haven't told you about it yet. Um, so, Hasbro is doing a thing. Go on. They owe us and money at this point. They owe me money, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, Hasbro Pulse has a thing called HasLab. Okay. Now, HasLab is basically Kickstarter for Hasbro. Yeah. And I've just sent you a link. Um, and they're doing their first Transformer Kickstarter, basically. Oh, nice. And it's Unicron. Oh, shit. All right. So, now... Dear Lord. It's a huge toy. How bi- How do they give... I'm, I'm scrolling around. Do they give... Uh, the it's, I think... 36 no 27 inches tall damn okay and it's 30 inches in diameter when it's in planet mode Mm -hmm. so really cool really gorgeous but it's uh six hundred dollars before shipping pretty much yeah which is insane and not only that but it needs eight thousand backers to be successful meaning what is that uh um, it, it's, Damn. it's a decent chunk of money. Yes. Uh, we're, we're looking at about boop, 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 4 million, 4.8 million dollars they have to earn before what? they're able to make it. Um, and there's only 2000 backers so far. So they're at a quarter of what they need. The problem is they announced it and started the Kickstarter a month before the release yeah and i don't know of many people who can get together six hundred dollars in a month because you have to pay up front oh damn okay and it doesn't release until 2020 it's 2021 it is beautiful i'm looking at it it's a gorgeous figure it's just it's too big (laughs) and it's close to the size of the other Titans I have, but it's uh, it's like three times more expensive. Yeah, why do they need that? Well, four million well, for a production run because they've got well, a sample of one already. Because that's not a rendering. Some of the these they're like that's they they, they have well, a prototype. It's a prototype, so that doesn't mean the toolings are made. Well, yeah, they just soft tooled it. Yeah, so they don't they don't have hard toolings for it yet. And the plastic cost on this is probably ridiculous. It's still Hasbro, though. And these are all small, small like, pieces. So if they're... Again, this is... I work in a world of, like, where they're tooling metal and shit like that. But, like, hard tooling, you're going to get a fee of, like, 10K or whatever, depending on the size of something. But this is plastic. They soft-tooled a lot of it. And they could probably do... What's a full production? Like, how, what, how many units are they looking to move? Like, what? <laughs> I could probably well, solve their problem. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, let's put it this way. 8,000 yeah. 8, units is probably more units than they've sold of a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Like, my uh, my Trypticon. Which I is have, fine. I mean, that's, depending on how they make everything, that's when you'd probably have to swap out the die anyway. Yeah. There's, there's also a concern for it, because the... Well, there's a concern I have about it, and that's... Quality assurance has not been great on the Titan class figures, so the figures oh. that are this size, yeah, like recently it's been pretty scattershot. Like, yeah. um, the Trypticon had really bad light breakage issues for a while, uh-huh. um, and there's rumors that the Omega Supreme is having difficulties. Um, the, the 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 release date got pushed back because it was having difficulties with QC. Yeah, so um, for me, sight unseen. Six hundred dollars is a crazy amount of money to pay 
for something yeah. that could be for something terrible. that's a year away. Like that this is only for people who like this is the kind of stuff they spend their money on anyway. Well, I'm the kind of people who spend their money on this kind of stuff, but even for me, this is like questionable, especially considering the fact that I have a Unicron. Yeah. So it's like I actually had two and then I gave Falco the one that was broken. So I don't know. Most most of the most of the community that I've been seeing because I've been following it, most of the community is kind of like, "Wow, that's gorgeous." Yeah, that's too much. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. No, that's but, that was also my thoughts. Yeah. The um. But yeah. So. I don't know. <sighs> what I had pulse? to go to. Pulse. Pulse is Hasbro's like premium service. Like they're they're. They're they're playing around with the idea of skipping retailers for the oh, most part. Oh, skipping retailers, retailers, but doing higher end uh, toys. Yeah, that's that's basically what they're doing. Like, um, they're they're cutting middlemen out for the most yeah. part. That's that's the it's the evolution of Hasbro Toy Shop. That's um, sort of the evolution of like all re- retail right now. Yeah, uh, I mean it's fair though because quite frankly, regular retail does have a habit of not selling things properly yeah and like if you're selling directly to consumers then you can make smaller batches and tune like batch on demand and all that kind of stuff so yeah. but i mean at the end of the day well like like for example um recent initially there was a fortress maximus pre-order yeah. thing that uh what was it called um Takara made a like open of pre-orders for this thing and it would have mm-hmm. created another one of the pretenders. Like they would have made a new mold for the pretenders, but it didn't get uh enough support. Yeah. So they canceled all the pre-orders. Oh damn, okay. Yeah. So I mean, like you can do stuff like that now and you know I, I, I honestly I did I, I talked about this a while back, but I think I might really do that whole notion of um that ludology uh podcast because yeah i've already i've already talked like six minutes on un- seven minutes unscripted about the nuances of <laughs> of, Hasbro. Titan, of yeah. titan class uh unicron and why it's got problems and why it doesn't have problems and... <sighs> <laughs> but yeah that's sigh yeah um i'm just scrolling through their website looking at stuff now i kind of want the Donald Glover action figure. The Donald Glover action figure? Yeah. From uh, Solo, right? Yeah. I'm assuming. Just because I want a figure of Donald Glover. That's fair. Oh, it's really good. It's got the... It has the new face screen printing technology that they have. Yeah. Um. Oh, this is... What size is this? 3.5 inch? That's 3.5 inch, and it has that level of detail on the face? Yeah. Good lord. Also, it's super cheap. Oh yeah. Um. Oh, so I also forgot something in last that last week's episode to make yes. a joke about. Uh, you mentioned that the the sighting happened in 1977. Yeah, that's when uh that's when Star Wars was released. Oh, nice. So the Yowie was probably just just Chewbacca. That Nemesis Prime DLX looks good. Which Nemesis Prime? It's Nemesis Prime DLX Scale Collectible Figure Limited Edition by 3A30. Oh, well, that's 3A. So it's non-transforming. It's like... That's like practically uh, oh, like Hot Toys. Oh, it's like Hot you. Toys level of... For, it's like Hot Toys for Transformers. Oh, okay. Basically, think of it that way. Um, like, it's still cheaper than Hot Toys, but it's yeah. the same okay. rough feel. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's... Oh, it's a it's a repaint. Um, it's a repaint of the three A figure they made for the Bumblebee movie. Because if you look at the if you look at the the stand, you can still yeah. see the the Bumblebee imprint. Oh, because okay. they're probably using the same tooling. Yeah. And although that that's probably a laser cut, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm not even looking at that anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm just scrolling around. I'm looking <laughs> at the Transformers Generation Selects Deluxe Class WFC GS05 Autobot Lancer. Uh, Lancer, she's a she's a new new lady bot, I think. Yeah. 
But they have a nice masterpiece black arachnia. Yeah, I already have a pre-order on that. Do you? Um, that looks nice. Yeah, uh, the the beast mode is terrible though. Is that they've got her doing like a sexy pose? Well, she's black arachnia. You kind of yeah. you kind of can't get around her doing the sexy pose. Like it's literally oh, the, the stand she... comes with the web. She can have a spider web. Yeah, yeah. I I got. There's also a legends class that a third party is making of that. Wow, man, they they went super super duper sexy on her poses. Yeah, both of them. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I've talked about Transformers for ten minutes, Brandon. Yeah, this isn't the first time it's happened. Uh, by now, it's expected. I I just wanted to make a note of the fact that there's a there's a really really big Unicron out there. It is a huge figure. It's beautiful, though. It's it's beautiful, but like. I, I had the feeling that if I ordered that, I would be in so much trouble. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. That's fair. Because, <laughs> like, I have a Unicron already. I don't need a 27-inch tall Unicron, yeah. really. Like, I have the Unicron set up right now. I don't need it. I would love it. Yeah. But I don't need it. But... Regardless. So what's so now I'm looking at the Marvel Legends series and they come with like body parts like the old Inspector Gadget when you go to like McDonald's. Yeah. What yeah. are the body parts gonna build? They're build a figures. So each wave releases. It. <sighs> okay. So basically the idea is you have a build a figure to drive sales. Right. Yeah. So like if you look at a wave of. But what's the big thing that it's making? Well, that depends on the wave, right? Um, tell me, tell me one figure and I'll tell you what he's making. So he, he looks like Abominable Snowman. Marvel Legends here is Wolverine. Marvel Legends Sinister. Uh, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler? Cannonball. Yeah, me... so they're all, they have the all body parts to make that will, uh, what, what looks like a Yeti. Uh, oh, I see what you're talking about. Um, let's see. It should say Wendigo. The name, it's Marvel's oh. Wendigo. That's okay. the name of the figure. So like. Basically, the idea is, all right. So let me. I'm looking at the wave right now, right? Okay. So the wave has Cannonball, Boom Boom, Wolverine, Guardian, who looks like he's a Canadian dude. Yeah. I don't know what the other ones are. So here's why that that exists, because no one's gonna buy Guardian. Oh yeah, that's true. But Guardian's the torso and the tail. Yeah. So that's like the one you need most. Yes. So they'll they'll still sell the stuff that like random people want, like really, like it lets them make like bizarre figures. Yeah. But um, you know they can still sell the bizarre figures because they're a part of a wave that has a build a figure piece, which then means because there's a build a figure piece, it's going to drive sales. Yeah. So it's more likely someone who might not have bought every figure in the line will now buy every figure in the line because they're yeah. trying to make a character. Okay. Right. Like I bought, I bought, uh, I bought, uh, who did I buy? I bought a, a version of Iron Man, like Space Iron Man. Yeah. And I bought Nova mm -hmm. back when Guardians of the Galaxy came out because I wanted Root. Yes. Um, I would not have bought nova and space iron man unless groot was an option got you okay so that that's that's the whole point of it yeah in effect um but 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 we've been talking for to about toys for 14 minutes yes sir so i think it's time to talk about a cryptid okay uh we're cryptopedia Brandon usually says all the other stuff, so if you want to hear the whole monsters, myths, yada, yada, yada bit, listen to one of Brandon's episodes. They're the odd ones. <laughs> and I don't mean that in the sense that they're odd. I mean that in the sense that they're the odd-numbered ones, although they yeah. might be odd. Um, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And yeah, that's... Usually I say this is Cryptopedia then, but you know what? I My, my brain is all hopped up on toy right now. <laughs> He's uh, high on toy. I'm high on toy, and if you know me... 
high on toy John is a different John. I, I there's two points in my life where I turn into full full on competency mode. Yeah. That's talking about action figures and talking about my job. Yes. Those are the two zones of my life where I just <laughs> like a different John takes over. Yeah. And that John knows every little detail he has to know about the thing that he's talking about. <laughs> the rest of my life I exist. <laughs> I'm extant. Hear me roar. Yes. So. <laughs> gotta hydrate. Yeah, I gotta hydrate. Um, so this week, I'm doing something very not in my wheelhouse. Go on. I'm excited. Before you even continue, I've been I've been off the, the socials uh, more than usual recently, but I still get notifications whenever you tweet. And I'm excited because I've been, you've been saying shit about, this is definitely like, out of your wheelhouse, but it's, like, exactly what, like, for the pocket. Like, I'm excited, because you've been talking some shit. This is, uh, this is wild. So, okay. the first and only sighting was in 2005. New, new, okay. Its taxonomy is humanoid. And its region is Thailand. Oh. You're never going to guess this, because oh. I found this on accident. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, 2005. Thailand. Yep. Humanoid. Mm -hmm. And it's a one-off. Um, it's a one-off. It's a one-off. It's a one-off. Can I have one minor other thing? What is... What, it's yellow. I don't got... I got nothing. I got nothing. Yeah, there's no way you were going to get this one. I got I, nothing. I legitimately... I was, like, just browsing, and I found this on accident. Ooh, so... Okay. This week's episode is about the ghostly scarecrow of Chiang Rai. What? Okay. So, for the this episode, I'm primarily going to be using a Cryptopia article as the main source. Okay. Um, because most of the primary sources are in Thai, and I'm a little rusty on that. Yeah, <laughs> that's understandable. I mean, you said you were looking at Duolingo. I was, but I don't think I'm going to learn Thai, because they have, like, a language... They have, a, they have a script that I really, really have no idea where to even begin. Because, mm -hmm. like, I don't consume Thai media. So, at the very least, if, I, if I'm, if i like, if I look at Japanese, I consume Japanese media enough that, like, I'm familiar with, like, different characters. Yeah. Not necessarily meaning I know them, but I can, like, mm -hmm. at least pick out what a different character is. Whereas in Thai, I literally can't tell what a different character is. Okay. So, it, it's very different. Um, I should also note that this is one of those cases where like 90% of the articles are just the same article over and over and over and yeah. over. And over. Yeah. No, I know and, that. I know that feel. And that article is the Cryptopia article. So that's okay. why it's my main source. Okay. Uh, so why Nam Rock Chiang Rai pa province, Thailand? Um, I have run. no idea. I have no idea if I'm going to be pronouncing literally anything right in this episode. So, hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Chiang Rai is the northernmost pro province in Thailand and located at the nexus of the Rauk and Mekong rivers. I also read that it has something to do with the Kok River, uh, just because people like to laugh at that. Ha, 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 ha. said Kok. Ha, 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 ha. Um, the region has been inhabited since the 7th century CE and features a combination of river plains and hilly terrain. The region is also a part of the Golden Triangle, the convergence of Thailand, Laos, and Burma. Uh, basically, the three borders meet at the northern part, and it's like, yeah. um, it's a place. <laughs> the name was bestowed <laughs> upon the region, the, the Golden Triangle. That name was bestowed... St bestowed upon the region by the CIA uh, in reference to the pro prolific opium production from the 1920s until oh, 1959, yeah. when the practice was made illegal by the Thai government. Uh, production continues this day in Burma and Laos. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> fun name. Uh, yeah. The cultivation of opium poppies has since shifted to coffee, bananas, coconuts, and pineapples. Nice. Uh, 
Huai Nam Rock, which is where the event actually takes place, yeah. I literally I could not find much of anything about. No? Okay. No. But I had the feeling that that's largely because of the fact I won. Don't understand how Taiwanese or not Taiwanese, that's totally different. Yeah. Uh I don't understand how Thai provinces yeah. work like at all. Like it's okay. it's a total mystery to me. Yeah. Um there's obvious language barriers and layer on top of that it's an agricultural village. Uh-huh. It, it, it's it has a lot of markers for it to not be like easily super well, researchable. Yeah. Yeah. Um additionally it's like in the heart of the Golden Triangle, which was mm-hmm. a opium production location. Uh and generally, generally, drug operations like to keep on the hush hush. Yeah, they this. they try to keep it low low. They're not they're not gonna. Yeah, they're they're not <laughs> broadcasting they're not, uh, out there. Yeah, they're not yeah. they're not trying to have like uh, what is it? Uh, like like uh, like commerce meetings yeah. about how we get more people here. Um, usually it's the opposite. Mm-hmm. So, sometime between so let's let's uh let's jump to our event. Okay. August thirty first, two thousand five. Okay. By Nam Rock. Sometime between 8 a.m. and 8.30 a.m., Sai Wang. Go for it. Go hard. Go deep. Go confident. Boon Ratshak. Sounds good to me. Boon Ratshak? Whatever. Uh, age 51, was bicycling by a rice and lemongrass field owned by T. Kitkang Bong. Okay. Uh, age 69. Insisting on his sobriety, which is usually a great sign. Oh, yeah. Boon Rachask claimed to have seen a creature hovering above the field. It was hovering. Hovering. Okay, uh, it was hovering. Hovering, like like floating above the field. Yeah. Um, and for the people who have the uh, the show note, uh, the, 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 the research, uh, there's a picture of it. Oh, it's a beautiful picture. It's a pretty beautiful picture. It's I don't even know how to describe it. Imagine, like, a Dr. Seuss drew a person but didn't put a head on it, and they have red boobs. Pretty much. Um, uh, another way to describe it would be a, a yellow bowling pin. Yeah. Uh, with red eyes at the top. Weird, like it looks um, like someone is standing with their hands behind their back, uh, but then their head is gone. And I get that the top thing is the creature's head, but it's drawn like if it was a standard human and that human had no head. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see that too. Um, the ears are basically like a Ferengi's though. Like, oh, yes. Like, I may have called this episode Quark Needs AA. <laughs> um, oh, so, man. Yeah. Uh, the creature in question was described as being an armless humanoid with okay. two short legs with tapered feet Standing at around 30 inches in height, which is about 2.5 feet or 74 centimeters, for those of you who don't think an inch is like me. Um, <laughs> the skin of the creature was a jaundiced yellow with blood red eyes and an almost bowling pin shaped body with large Ferengi shaped ears, as I said before. Yeah. Very uh, Ferengi. The most unsettling aspect of the creature, however, was its seeming, seemingly uh, its seeming ignorance to the laws of gravity. Because fuck gravity. Yeah, I mean, it did float a lot, so... Yeah. You know, it, it is what it is. Uh, hovering in the air, the creature nodded its head at Boon Rachesk and stared directly at him. The gaze was described in the Kurtoki article as being imploring, almost as if it was asking for help. I, me- I I picture it as like one of those up nods, like when you see someone you know across the street, but you know you're not going to go over and say hi. You just give them the up nod and keep going. I mean, I the way that they drew the ears, it reminds me very much of uh, of uh, like ET as well. Yeah, because it's got like a lot of wrinkles, mm-hmm. like like a bizarre amount of wrinkles. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no, I'm definitely imagining like a. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or or the like the scene from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia where mm-hmm. Mac and Charlie notice each other across the room and they're like mm. <laughs> where they're just yeah. like trying to reach out to the other one. Uh-huh. Um 
Boonaran Chask left the scene of the incident and relayed his sightings to the other villagers of the strange creature in the field. Naturally, this prompted Sewang Bunyalak and several other villagers to see the creature for themselves. In a oh. stunning twist, the creature was still there. Wow, okay. I did not expect that for a minute. Yeah, not I didn't for a either. Second. That's why I this, this this is part of the reason why I covered this because it's extremely uh atypical. Yes. So, um it's described by Bunyalak himself as having the following appearance. The alien is about 70 centimeters high, has yellow skin and a flat chest. Its mouth is very tiny and it has a big bald head with big eyes and big ears, which to me is oh, an God. anime character. Yeah, oh that picture though. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that's a thing. Yeah, it is. Because uh, that's... Even though that's, like, not an exact match to what it said, uh, that was what popped in my head. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's something. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to describe that a little bit? I don't even that... know how. Yeah, I... That's... That's kind of like... fair. Those dead eyes. It's an anime person's head with big eyes. It's a bald head, and they're just staring at you like it's the last thing you're going to see before you die in a terrible way. Yeah, I should know it's Nami from One Piece, uh, which I don't think you've read One Piece ever or watched it. I watched part of one episode on Cartoon Network, and I was like, this isn't for me. That's fair. Um, but basically, they... they... They're underlying the fact that how little uh, proportion there is in the way that the head is drawn. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, a little ridiculous. It's it's pretty ridiculous. Although, if you saw her body, that's not the least out of proportion thing about her. Oh, man. Okay. Uh-oh. I hear typing. Oh, man. Just just Google Nami, actually. Okay. And then click Images. You'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Should I turn on safe search? Mm, honestly, probably, but you don't. Oh, have... she has hair though. She does have hair. They just they shaved it off for the picture. Okay. But she does have a lot of fore forehead real estate. For sure. A lot of forehead. She also has a very large plot. Um. Anyways, the creature was additionally described as being unconcerned by the crowd that had gathered to look at. It. Wandering for nearly an hour um, about the field. Oh, so that's a... I was wondering why they call it a scarecrow. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, because initially the witnesses reported as believing it was a scarecrow, which is yeah. why they have the moniker. Gotcha. Um, it continued to float around the field until about... Oh, the microphone keeps dropping. <laughs> Gotta tighten those clamps. I think I need to tighten the bolts, but I don't have yeah. my my socket set with me. Oh, gotcha. Um, it continued to float around the field until about 10.30 a.m. when the entity, according to Kama Pinsai Moon, uh, stretched, turned jet black, and then disappeared into the sky like a soaring rocket. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait, 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 wait. 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 It stretched... Turned jet black, but how long did it, how long did it stretch? It it doesn't say, uh, and then disappeared into the sky like a soaring rocket. Okay, I mean, I guess I'll accept that. Sure, yeah, no, I accept that. That's the only witness who said that, though. Um, oh, okay. The other witnesses insisted that the creature changed into an orb, which hovered in the sky. Uh okay, those are different accounts. Yeah, they're they're, they're pretty different. Very different. They're yeah. pretty different. Um witness theories at this time varied wildly. Some oh, God. believed it to be an alien, while others a Casper like ghost. That's Most... not what Casper did. No, no. At all. all. No, at he all. didn't. He didn't. Uh most rationally, one witness, Bao Kwai. Into Wang believed that the creature was an animated doll, like read a, a hoax. Like, oh, like, I got you. Like, like it, not it, not a literal animated doll, but like a hoax. Got yeah, you. like it was like a puppet that someone yeah. was like 
they they had set it up like a pulley system and like fishing line and it had been like popping it around the field or something like that. Gotcha. That that's honestly of all the theories, it's probably the most reasonable. But I do have a potential explanation that we'll get into in a bit. Oh, good, good. That's but, real good. <laughs> The the potential explanation is probably the best explanation for anything yeah. that's ever been on a Cryptopedia episode ever. Wow. Um, so that's I'm excited. Yeah. I'm just very excited. Oh so the, man. Like I said before, the actual event itself extremely short lived, yeah. lasting only around two to four hours. If one witness is to believe, because one person said, "Oh, I saw that before him." Oh, I got you. Yeah. Um. Did I spell? What is this? Okay, uh, the creature itself was largely non-hostile, well, explicitly non-hostile. It did no hostile acts ever. Mm-hmm. Um, left no evidence of its appearance. The incident did generate enough curiosity, though, however, that local police had to send in extra officers to handle the crowds. Oh, okay. Uh, police were unable to find any damage to the fields, nor any physical evidence of the event. For a claim of the supernatural, right, this is a really smart one because given that it floated the whole time, there would never be any physical evidence. So people couldn't, wouldn't be able to look for it because there wouldn't be any. Yeah, so I, I actually touch on that a little bit because okay. uh, Cryptopia kind of points that out. And oh, okay. uh, they ignore the legitimacy of the statement by the police and sow the seeds of doubt in the official stance on the case by pointing out the creature had floated above the field. Yeah. And like you said, this is accurate based on the story. However, it is underhanded, as the claim does require proof, because they're claiming that something floated above a field for four hours, practically. Yeah. Um, but the police, you know, basically, they were saying that... The police themselves were saying that there was no physical proof. So it's like, yeah, you may say that this happened, but there's no way to prove that this happened. Okay. And that's a huge deal. Yeah. Like, it's the whole extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence thing. I think. Oh, yeah. What was it? James Randi said that, I want to say. No, that was Stan Lee. Uh, that, that, that's Excelsior. <laughs> no, that was the Spider-Man thing. Whatever. Great power, great responsibility. But like, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Yeah. The, bur- the, uh, the burden of proof is on the person that, that's making the claim, and clearly they can't do that in this situation. Yeah, which, yeah. you know... It was 2005, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt because, mm-hmm. like, it's 2005 in a farm town, so the odds of people having, like, camera phones is low. Yeah. But they also didn't take any pictures, so. And, like, like, yeah, they, like I don't know. there's enough people who saw it in the length of time that it was there for that I feel like even a disposable camera could have been pulled yeah. into this. Oh, I love that clicking sound. Snap, click, click, click. When you got, <clears throat> when you got to move the wheel. Yeah, I, those I, I miss those. I miss those so much. Isn't it weird that that's like a piece of technology that just doesn't exist anymore because there's no purpose to it? That's true. Because it's just no. Because like literally, it's just worse. It's worse than yeah. everything else. Like it doesn't even have the appeal yeah. of. It doesn't even have the appeal of a of a, a Polaroid. Like Polaroid yeah. came back because there's still a purpose for it. Yeah. I was at how many weeks ago was this? I was at um stockade with uh some some people from around. <laughs> I was at a bar hanging out with people who also work at a bar, and mm-hmm. um some uh, girl was in there with a, a Polaroid, and she whenever she just saw like a group of friends hanging out, she like snapped the Polaroid and then just hand it to them, so we got our pictures taken. Yeah, it was well, nice. That, we all I had mean... to take our glasses off, so we all look super weird to ourselves in the picture. <laughs> yeah, I don't take my glasses off. I know. I want contacts. I can't. oh, so fun story I about can't. contacts. Yeah. Uh, do you have an astigmatism? No. Okay. I have astigmatism, and the way that contacts work for people with astigmatism for for those of you who don't know, that means my eyes are not uh are not full spheres. They're more like oblique steroids, mm-hmm. um, meaning they're like football shape roughly. Yeah. Uh, the the contact lenses for people with eyes like mine are weighted. Oh, so they stay in the correct orientation. Yeah, and they spin in your eye, and it hurts. 
Oh, I just can't bring myself to touch my own eyeball, but I sweat a lot and real easy. And when I do, my glasses keep falling off. And I don't yeah. want to have to be in public with that strap that goes around the back of your head to hold your glasses on. You'll get there, Brandon. It'll happen. One day. Oh, one I day, own those. Yeah. I own those. Yeah. One day you'll just be like, I'll, I'll put it on. And then yeah. it'll never come off again. Oh, and that's geez. your life. Yeah. That's your life then. Yeah. Wait for it. It'll happen. <laughs> I know you. Uh, so this is funny because I, I, mm -hmm. I, as I'm reading this, I'm thinking of. Casey Kasem, mm -hmm. the original voice actor to Shaggy. I know who Casey Kasem is. I know. It was for other people's benefit, not he's yours. He's why Shaggy was a vegetarian. He is, although he's I not I said that anymore. in a bad way, but that is not a bad thing at all. I don't eat. I hardly eat any meat. Yeah. He's not a vegetarian anymore, by the way. Yeah. They kind of... Which, they kind yeah, of, they, fuck, they shouldn't have done that to him, though. They should have done you that. You know what I made last night? I had mm -hmm. some vegan... Um, uh, like dumplings, like mm -hmm. vegetable and tofu. They, ooh, basil and garlic in there. It was good. Uh, there's actually a really talking about dumplings. There's a really good dumpling store in uh, Poughkeepsie. Yeah. Um, if you go south on nine past, um, it's past the Coles yeah. and near the Spins Lanes. Okay. Really good dumpling place. It's literally called Dumplings. Is it? It's just called Dumplings. Okay. Yeah, it's really good. They have I'll a really good soup. Out. Um, so Kitty Kasem, I know that's probably not how it's pron yeah. pronounced. It just reminds me of Kitty Kasem. Uh, Ratanosco, ra Ratan, uh, Kosa. Yeah. A 30 year old Ratanakoska. Kosa. Close enough. <laughs> uh, Close enough. A 30 year old em hotel employee. Basically he's, he's some random hotel employee, uh, comes over and investigates the inc incident. Uh, he gathers reports from witnesses and attempted scientific evaluation of the soil and rocks, although there's no real details in the article that I found. Um, reportedly, locals had made claims of a floating fire falling in the field the night before the sighting. Um, Kitty Kasem's, Kasem's, Kitty Kasem's investigation pushes this more towards a Hopkinsville style story. So, uh, in fact, most of the core elements of, of the Hopkinsville story are actually here. Fire in the sky, small, large-headed entities are seen, creatures float, and seem to mean no harm. It even has the I didn't drink angle. There's a high degree of similarity. There's an extremely like a real high, high degree of similarity. Yeah. Like, like, because remember, in the Hopkinsville case, the creatures never attacked, and they had their hands up like, whoa, dude, don't shoot. Yeah. And this creature's like giving an imploring, like, hey, yeah. nod to them. So there's a lot of similarities there. And not oh, yeah. only that, but it's a oh, one time incident. Mm -hmm. um, it should be noted, however, that this ex investigation seems to be the only one that digs up the information of the, like, uh, fire in the sky stuff. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't know. And layer on top of the fact that our investigator came from a different province, it mm -hmm. smells as though he may have had an agenda for this. Oh, I got aliens. you. Yeah. So, you never know. Mm -hmm. um, overwhelmingly, most officials who visited the site didn't actually believe that anything paranormal or supernatural had happened. However, the public was obsessed. Uh, to the point that the mayor needed to set up a camera to monitor the field due to media requests. Nice. Additionally, the road near the field needed to be repaired because of the heavy influx of traffic on a dirt road. Oh, man. This thing blew up then. Yeah, it got really popular yeah. in the area for a really quick period. It was it was wild. Um, not much happened with the story, though. Right? Like, there's not really a whole lot to go on because no one took pictures uh, and something floated. So there's no possibility. There's, like, a really low possibility of physical evidence. Yeah. You know, and it either a turned into an orb or stretched into the sky like somebody screwing up something in a video. Game. Yeah, <laughs> like like in Halo Two when you uh, bounce. Yeah, I'm calling it Bethesda ing though because Bethesda has a much better tendency for poly oh, yeah. polygons to get all wiggly yeah. wonky. Wiggly wonky. Yeah. Oh, did you see that Doom Three is on the Switch now? I did. That's all. 
Um, because <laughs> I know you like Doom Three, so I figured. Yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the story may have a conclusion. Oh. Okay, like an actual conclusion. Hmm. We'll say we'll say seventy five percent. Okay, I'll take a seventy five percent conclusion. Uh, but before we go too much further, I want to take two detours to explore somewhat similar phenomena. Okay. Uh, one to Finland, 1971, and then another to China in 2012. Okay. Uh, the main reason I'm doing this is because this episode would be over right now. And oh, I got you. Okay, these that's are, fair. These similar. are two. These are two semi, somewhat similar stories, and they're nowhere near long enough to be their own episodes. So, got you. I so I see what you're doing. You're trying to steal from lascivious lore. I would have never found these in, for lascivious lore. This, these aren't the kind of websites I poke around on anyway. <laughs> yeah. So let's go to Finland. February 2nd, 1971. Okay. Uh, around 8 p.m., two women, Sinika Kuitinen and Mrs. Manenen. It's Finland. I like. There's there's no way we're getting any of that right. No. I, I made a really bad... I, I screwed myself on this one. Yes, uh, you did. Are driving in the Kiminki region of Finland. As they're driving, a mysterious light begins to pace the vehicle and passes over the car. This is like hold of folk levels of shit you what nobody can pronounce. Yeah. In that episode. Like yeah, just the really Iceland is. stuff. It, that's <laughs> Yeah. I I I I screwed myself real bad on this one. Yeah. Uh it passed over the car and the driver's ears felt a sensation of being plugged up. Okay. When passing a nearby field, the light disappeared and a three foot tall helmeted creature clad in green nice. suit cross the road in front of the duo, taking small leaps. Nice. The area was remote and devoid of homes or businesses. Taken alone, this is an oddity, and superficially shares some facets in common with the Scarecrow of Chiang Rai. Small stature, mysterious lights, and supernatural origin. Yeah. However, this would not be the last sighting of the creature. Oh, okay. On February 5th, 1971, um... Something else happened. Okay. While cutting down trees at 3 p.m., a pair of young lumberjacks, Peter Aliranta, 21, and Esco Fani Snek, 18, were cutting trees in Kanula Forest, Finland. So it's a forest. Gotcha. Uh, not really close to the first sighting, roughly three hours away. All right. But it's also three days later, so not completely unreasonable. It's not like it happened the same night. Yeah. Um, after stopping work for the day, Aliranta, that's, that's Petter, mm -hmm. um, noticed a metallic object above the treetops, describing the shape as being two saucers, roughly 15 feet in diameter, having four thin landing legs longer than six feet. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a flying saucer. Yeah. Like um, an old school flying saucer. Yeah. Like a War of the Worlds style flying saucer. Yeah. Uh, as the craft descended... A portal opened at the bottom, and the creature from the sighting three days prior emerged. Oh, okay. So three hours away, he's got a flying saucer. He could have definitely made that trip. He could have made the trip. Uh, this time, the description, a little more precise. The creature had a diver's mask. Um, and while it had hands, it had arms and legs, it had no hands or fingers. So it's basically Patrick Star. Yeah. Um, it's green Patrick Star at this point. The creature proceeded to float down six feet from the ship to the ground. Upon landing, the creature approached the pair, robotically skipping as though it was an astronaut on the moon. Oh, okay. So that's the, the main tie to the Scarecrow. It's got kind of similar features, and it has a similar disregard for gravity. Yeah. Um, in an act of bravado for a 20-year-old one, 21-year-old man, well, not really, well, I didn't read my whole sentence. <laughs> okay. In an act of bravado suited for a 20-year-old, one-year-old man, Aliranta chased the creature away with a revved chainsaw. Oh, nice. He even claims to have grabbed the boot of the creature, which resulted in searing pain akin to a hot iron. Oh, okay. Supposedly, marks left by this would be visible for a full two months later. Okay, I feel like you should see a doctor about that. Yeah, there's no picture either, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the craft then gracefully lifted off from the sky, never to be seen again. Um, I also found this in a Cryptopia article, uh, and it mentions that this might have been a coax carried out by a local DJ 
But I couldn't find any sources on it. Oh, good. Okay. And all the yeah. sources sources are bad anyway. Yeah, all the sources I found on this basically told that same story. Yeah. So there was literally no way. Like literally, that's everything. There was oh god, a hundred percent no way that I could have made that into a full episode. And yeah. It probably wouldn't have even been a good lascivious lore episode. No. To be honest. It's just way too short. Yeah. Uh so yeah, it it's kind of got like superficial similarities to the Scarecrow, mm. uh, but. It's more just it fits in the same theme. Yeah. Now the next one. The, okay. The ne- oh, this is the China one. Mm-hmm. Got you. Okay. The next the, one yeah. may have something to do with what happened on uh that that field in Chiang Rai. Okay. Uh, back in 2012, the rural village of Lianchunbu, China, had been digging a well. When about 80 meters down, they made an interesting discovery. Brandon, this might sound familiar. The oh. villagers had discovered a slimy plant, which this even is, in, yes, is this what I spoke about in like episode? Well, hold up, hold up, let's, hold up. Let's let's go through it. But yes, it's 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 episode one. Yeah, it's this is it's a, a callback, callback to, to episode, episode one. one. Yeah. Wow, I forgot uh, all the context around that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> The villagers had discovered a slimy plant, which even an 80-year-old resident of the town had never seen before. Excitedly, the villagers contacted the media with their find. This is where Ye Young Feng, the news station reporter, makes her entrance to give a report on the plant, which had been stored in a plastic this button. This is the exact bucket. And bu- this is the exact. Th- this is the exact exact thing I was talking about in episode one. It is. Wow. Immediately, Ye identified the plant as a mushroom. Owing to the dual mushroom heads on either side of the specimen. Yes! Yes, it's beautiful! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, man, I'm so happy right now. It has a lot to do with what we're about. Uh, it has a lot to do with what the Scarecrow of Chiang Rai was. Uh, the heads were connected by a hole running through the entirety of the object. The mushroom measured approximately 19 centimeters was very smooth and felt like meat. (laughs) The villagers identified the mushroom as a type of Lingzi mushroom known as the Tai Su, a mythological mushroom said to be the key to longevity. Oh, good. Oh, good. At this point, if you haven't realized it, uh, and you're not a long time... For, for the longtime listeners of Cryptopedia, uh, you've probably seen this news report because Brandon had this as the uh, bit at the end of the first episode. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. The mushroom in question was a discarded sex toy that someone dropped yeah. in the in the in the well. Yeah. Don't put that in the well. Now you may be wondering, John, what does this have to do with Chang Rai? Well, <laughs> this is this is this is probably my favorite thing about this whole episode. Oh man! So it turns out that the scarecrow may have been less Finland and more China. On August twentieth, two thousand five, Tong Wan Pochilet had gone to congratulate a relative on their recent graduation. Along the way, he stopped to visit a local museum. At which point he found an inflated greenish-orange rubber doll. Okay. The doll was approximately one meter tall and had been left in a tree by the roadside. Believing it to have been lost, he took it home to act as a scarecrow in his field. Oh, man. Okay. The doll itself had large eye, a large head and eyes, a nose, and a mouth. There were no ears, and the arms and legs were small. At this point... Does this oh, remind you wait of a anything? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Yes. The doll apparently floated in the heat of the day, requiring him to tie it up. However, on August 29th, 2005, there had been a storm, which carried the doll off in the direction of Huai Nam Rock. Tongman did not report this incident until September 11th. 
meaning that the rumor mill version of the story had solidified in their memories. So, there's no co concrete proof that this is what happened. However, and if you haven't guessed what I'm describing yet, Brandon, would you take it from me? Sure, it's a blow-up doll. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that the blow-up doll uh, reality is much funnier than it actually being something paranormal. Oh, yes. And if the blow-up doll was capable of floating in heat, it's entirely possible that they were just watching a blow-up doll, like, getting carried around in the currents of the field for, for an hour. <laughs> and then it blew away. That's amazing. That's so good. Like, I don't know if that's exactly what happened, but it's so... It, I think it's just as reasonable for that to have happened as aliens to kiss it. It's more reasonable for that to have happened. It is more reasonable for that to have happened. <laughs> but, like, there's, like, seven layers to this because it's, like, not only did this dude use a blow-up doll as a scarecrow, right? Yeah. But if this is the case, like, like even if it wasn't what, 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 what the scarecrow was, yeah. this dude was using a blow-up doll as a scarecrow. Yeah, I mean, that's creative. I mean, it's creative, but, like... Very inventive. I just... <laughs> when I re Like, I was reading the story, and I saw the picture. I was like, oh, this might be interesting. And it's a story, like, it's about an event. Because, like, I was yeah. looking for an event. Because events are usually easier to do episodes on. Uh -huh. And I was just like, okay, this is cool. So I was scrolling through, I read it, and then I saw this bit, and I'm like, well, now I, I have to do this. Of course. That's so good. Like, like... <sighs> I think that this is the first time on this podcast that, like, I know we had the, the bit in episode one that I recovered on this episode, but, like, this is just so... It's perfect. It's wonderful. I like that there's also that callback in there. Oh, I, I just... That's good. I was... This, this gave me... I was doing this when I was, like, still... I had, like, a really bad earache when I wrote this. Oh, and this yeah. just made my life better. <laughs> That's so good. So yeah, we don't know what the scarecrow of Chiang Rai was. Yeah. But I'm going to believe that it was a blow-up doll. I'm going to believe that it was a blow-up doll. Because <laughs> the place, the world is a little more magical now for me. Oh, yes. Somehow more magical than if it was an actual alien or ghost. Oh, yeah. Because now I'm filled with pure delight, and in those cases, I'd be filled with maybe horror. Yeah. So, but anywho, a um, little bit of a short one this this week because it was just too beautiful to to, to skip out on. Uh, yeah. As always, if you want to get in contact with us, we got some uh, some links for you. Um, our website is cryptopediacast.com, and all the links we're going to be mentioning now are on that mm -hmm. website. Our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Twitter, at CryptopediaCast as well. Uh, if you want to email us, CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. Uh, we have a Patreon. Links are in the show notes. Um, we got a bunch of content on there and all that good stuff. The, the research for this episode will be posted there when this is posted. So if you're a jackalope, or no, not jackalope. Um, it's Hoopsnake, mm -hmm. Hodag. Hodag and Hire will be able to access it. Uh, so that's two bucks a month, I believe. Um, we have a Facebook group if you want to talk to other people about this episode in question or complain about the fact that I... Well, actually, if you want to complain about the fact that I did an episode about a potential blow-up doll, you might be listening to the wrong podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to chase you away. I'm just saying this is super on brand. Mm -hmm. Um... If you enjoyed the podcast, though, you're good people. Uh, rate, review, subscribe, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. Uh, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. We are coming up on our one-year anniversary, and there's a few announcements for some stuff that's going to be happening coming forward. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to you guys more about that then. Um, and I think that's all I got for the general stuff. 
Yep. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Uh, if you want to follow me, I'm at mu2057 on crypt- uh, cryptopedia. On Instagram, I still got to make that cryptopedia thing. Um, on Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And if you want to email me, it's john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloriacoke.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. And we're only six episodes away, five, and then it's episode 52. No, it's six, right? Oh, five. Five. Fifty-two episodes would be between, the sixth. Yeah, five yeah. episodes between now and fifty-two. Yeah, and then the sixth episode is fifty-two, which I had to start working on it, but I have it planned, and it's a doozy. Yeah, I've got what I got forty-seven down. Mm-hmm. I've got to figure out forty-nine, fifty. So I got to get two more copies in. <laughs> oh boy, okay. I gotta get three, three copies in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are way past the point of weird. Like, we hit weird, like, episode one on the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I still can't believe it was a blow-up doll. That makes me so happy. Life is so much better now. Right? Like, I would have been upset with myself if I didn't cover this episode. You should be. Uh, I got, I got, I, good. I did the write up for it, like, without all the other bits. And yeah. I hit, like, 750 words or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or, no, it was like, like, a thousand words. I'm like, oh, that's way too short. So I was like, all right, let me yeah. add two things that I'll, let me add something that I'll never be able to cover in another episode that's tangentially yeah. related. Oh man! Oh, I, I also included a link to the uh, to the uh, the video of the sex toy. Oh god, it's That's so beautiful. uncomfortable. It's such an uncomfortable video. Because like, is it the exact same video that I I was talking yeah. about? Yeah. It probably is. Well, because it's molded. Like the the features are molded. And I think that's what yeah. makes me most uncomfortable. Because it's like. How oh did, yeah, that's the video right there. Like, how did nobody, how did nobody there think see that and think, oh, that's a butthole in a vagina? Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Like you gotta like if I saw that in real life, I would be like, oh, that's a. <laughs> <laughs> did nobody just get that? Nobody like. I just can't oh. even. <laughs> They're measuring it. I can't understand it. I can't understand it. <laughs>